From left to right, we have the oil supply line, which feeds an oil pump and atomizer, electrode and CAD cell housing, that feeds into the combustion chamber, a reset button that allows you to manually start the primary control, a TT terminal set, that's to provide 120 volts into the control and the burner. Here are the FF terminals, which are shown jumped out, which is the feedback from the flame sensor or CAD cell within the housing back through the primary control. So that yellow wire on the right side of the picture goes underneath the primary control and feeds back into it. The schematic shows pretty much the same thing. The pump is below this image. There are two electrodes have 20,000 volts. There's a transformer in the black piece fed with 120 volts. And then there's the feedback yellow lines. The proper band of operation is about 300 to 1100 ohms. The burner won't start if you jump out and have zero resistance or have anything lower than 1600 ohms. So if you put jumper cables on the FF terminal and hit the reset button, the burner will not start. Once it does start, however, if you're above 1600 for a set period of time and you don't descend into the range for operation, it will shut off after a lockout period, which is usually 30 to 45 seconds. That indicates that the flame sensor is broken or the wiring is bad. All right, so right now we've jumped the two wires on the CAD sensor, which is the cadmium flame sensor. If there's too much resistance in the flame sensor, the unit will shut off. The flame sensor is in here, and it basically looks at the inside of this to see what you'd see through this people, which is fire. If I didn't have this black wire, the flame sensor would say there's not a good flame and would shut off the power within 30 seconds. So we've got good oil, we've got good flame, and we've got good airflow. When the sensor is bad, it'll pop a high resistance and tell the primary controller to shut off. Likewise, if the FF cable is jumped out and you try to start the control, the control will not start because it has zero ohms. Removing the jumpers will make it start. To replace the CAD cell, you will need to open up the housing. Loosen this nut. Loosen this nut so that you could slide the burner open. Two electrodes, one CAD cell. You can order the Beckett part number from the description in the link below. Depending on the burner you have, there's a different mounting. So we could take this side view. Make it the same. For the part shown, the eye was bad, so I ordered a new eye. As shown in the Beckett diagram, I simply removed the old eye and snapping in the new eye, and that solved the problem. Be sure to close the eye housing fully so that you do not have any light penetrating into this area. Any light will make the controller not work properly. You may need to replace the CAD cell if the resistance is either too low or too high. High resistance could be from a dirty flame cell, but a low resistance could be from a short in the wiring cell itself. If you liked this video and found it helpful, please subscribe. Thanks very much, and have a great day.